Over the past few weeks, there's been a lot of talk of the Northern Irish Protocol, with many voicing their concerns and organising protests against it. So what is the Northern Irish Protocol and why is it so controversial? First, we must go back to look at the start of the process. In 2016, the people of the UK voted to leave the EU. This departure meant that Northern Ireland was also leaving the Union. It is important to note, though, that the people of Northern Ireland voted to remain in the EU. The only land border between the UK and the EU would now be on the island of Ireland. As there would be different trade rules each side of the border, checks would be required to ensure goods crossing the border meet the appropriate standard for the jurisdiction they are entering. This situation is further complicated by the Troubles, which occurred from the 1960s to the 1990s, mainly in Northern Ireland, but violence spread occasionally to England, the Republic of Ireland and even mainland Europe. The conflict was between Unionists who favoured remaining as part of the UK and Nationalists who want to reunify Northern Ireland with the Republic of Ireland. The conflict was ended by the signing of the Good Friday Agreement in 1998. Custom checks existed along the Irish border between 1923 and 1999, until the EU established the single market, which included the free movement of people, goods, capital and the freedom to establish and provide services across member states. This allowed for the removal of the Irish border infrastructure, which had often been targeted by paramilitaries. In the run-up to the Brexit referendum, Brexiteers claimed that concerns over the Irish border was scaremongering and a UK Member of Parliament, Kate Hoey, said that should there be any need for infrastructure along the Irish border, that the Irish government should pay for it. Following the passing of the Brexit referendum, the UK entered a transition period in which the UK would continue to follow the EU rules until a deal could be made for their exit of the EU. Theresa May's government decided that the UK would also leave the European Customs Union and the single market. She also stated that there would be no returns to the borders of the past. There were now three aims which couldn't all exist together. They were number one, no hard border on the island of Ireland. Number two, no customs border in the Irish Sea. And three, no British participation in the European single market and the European customs union. The EU negotiating team envisaged that a unique solution would be needed in this situation. A Northern Irish specific backstop was suggested. The backstop would mean that regardless of whether an agreement could be reached for the UK's exit of the EU before the end of the transition period, that an open border on the island of Ireland would be maintained, and the terms of the Good Friday Agreement would be respected. Negotiations between Jean-Claude Juncker and Theresa May regarding the backstop in late 2017 led to progress. They made a draft agreement, however objections from the Democratic Unionist Party of Northern Ireland collapsed these negotiations as the backstop would require keeping Northern Ireland in some aspects of the European single market indefinitely, and the DUP didn't want Northern Ireland being treated differently to the rest of the UK. In early 2019, the Westminster Parliament voted three times against accepting the withdrawal agreement and the backstop. Upon Boris Johnson becoming Prime Minister in July 2019, he sought to remove the backstop in favour of a new proposal which would see Northern Ireland remain aligned with the EU on standards of goods but some custom checks would happen along the Irish border. The EU rejected this. On the 10th of October 2019, negotiations resumed following a meeting of Boris Johnson and then Irish Taoiseach Leo Varadkar. A week later, Jean-Claude Juncker announced that an agreement had been reached between Boris Johnson's government and the EU. The Irish backstop would be replaced by the Northern Irish Protocol. This would see Northern Ireland adopt EU regulations on goods entering from the rest of the UK. These checks would be done at ports in Northern Ireland instead of on the Irish border. The protocol does contain a mechanism which allows Northern Irish MLAs to vote on whether to leave the protocol once every four years. The protocol has caused anger amongst unionist communities in Northern Ireland, as it is seen as partitioning the United Kingdom. Delays caused at ports due to checks and some British goods not meeting EU standards and so no longer being permitted entry into Northern Ireland is inflaming tensions. The most well-known example of this are British sausages, as EU regulations only allow frozen meat to enter the single market. Chilled meat such as sausages and minced meat from England, Scotland and Wales will not be allowed to enter Northern Ireland. 
the anger felt by unionists boiled over into riots in April. This is due to the fact that the DUP and many unionists feel the Northern Irish Protocol is an attempt to erode their British identity and tie them close to Dublin and Brussels. This is a clip of the Alliance Party leader Naomi Long voicing her thoughts on the DUP's position. What we heard tonight from Gavin was complete denial. The belief still at this point in time that there is such a thing as a borderless Brexit is just fantasy politics. And we can't deal with the reality and the practical outworkings of Brexit and the protocol unless we ground ourselves in facts. So the reality is that when you come outside the European Union, there's going to be a border. A choice had to be made about where that border was going to go. And I said before Brexit that the most likely place would be at ports and airports because it was manageable and contained. Now, that has, that's not because I want it there. It's not because I want to see those uh, barriers put in place, but it's because others forced us down that road. And I know Gavin doesn't want to revisit how we got here. That's understandable because the DUP walked us to this position. Um, it, when they had 10 MPs that had influence at Westminster, they squandered that influence. But the important thing is, if we are going to deal with this in any kind of practical way, we need to de-escalate it from being a constitutional question and take it as it is a question of trade. It's a question of trade. And if we continue to escalate it and say it's constitutional, we do create fear in communities. Nobody will be less British tomorrow morning in Northern Ireland as a result of the protocol. Nobody will be less British next week as a result of the protocol. Where you get your sausages from doesn't define your identity. And it's about time we got a grip on the language because it's getting out of hand. It is whipping up fear and tension. And while Gavin might say what he wants and what his colleagues want is peace and stability, when you amplify that kind of language and you don't provide solutions, that is not what you deliver. Recently, at a meeting of the G7, Boris Johnson has been threatening to suspend the Northern Irish Protocol, and European leaders such as Emmanuel Macron have stated that the UK must honour their word on the agreement, and a failure to do so would permanently sour relations between the UK and EU. Nigel Farage says that the UK never should have agreed to the Protocol and it should be scrapped, and with the newly appointed leader of the DUP, Geoffrey Donaldson, claiming he will right the wrong that is the Northern Irish Protocol. What do you think? Is it here to stay or will mounting anger cause it to crumble? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I believe at the time of recording, uh, we're at about 97 or 98 subscribers, so it'd be very nice to hit 100. The normal content on the channel tends to be Irish history and politics, but uh, occasionally there is videos on European history or politics and wider world history and politics. So if you enjoy that type of content and find it interesting, please consider subscribing and thanks again.